what was I gonna say here? Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today, I did the final presentation of my entire PhD. It is like such a relief to have it done. And every three months or so throughout my PhD project, I've had to give a departmental presentation to my entire department, which is about 70-ish people talking about my research and this was the last one of those I had to do. So I thought in a video today, I would talk through the steps I take to make a good presentation and then also cover some little tips on how to calm your nerves when you're giving a big presentation to an audience of experts. It can be super nerve wracking. I get nervous every single time I talk, but I've got a few ways that help me to calm down and deliver the talk that I know that I'm capable of giving. So first, let's start with how to make a banging data presentation. Let's go. In essence, what a presentation is, is a way for you to tell your story. And if you're giving a data presentation, it gives you the chance to lay out all of your lovely data in a narrative that makes sense to the audience and also to yourself. It is really beneficial to do these presentations because it outlines to you exactly what you've done and what you need to do next. So my first rule of making a presentation is look at the time you've been given and have no more slides than that allotted time. For example, if you've been given a 25 minute time slot for a presentation, I never have any more than 25 slides because I know that once I start talking on a slide, I will be speaking for at least a minute. So I would say 25 slides or less, ideally less. For my talk today, I had 23 slides. The slot I was given was 25 minutes and that included a title slide, an outline slide and a thank you slide at the end. So really I only had 20 slides that I was presenting to the audience. So I would say that you should always think about the number of slides that you're going to have. I would say the next thing that is really important to create a presentation that tells the story of your data is to write an outline for your presentation. My outlines for my presentations always include an introduction. So what the audience member needs to know. I then do a brief overview of what my project is following this introduction. So essentially, this is what we already know and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then I go into the results section. After the results, I have a conclusion slide and then a future direction slide and end it all with a thank you to the people who've helped me with my work. What I then consider is what is the main bit of data or the main pieces of data that I want to present in this presentation. and. For me, because I do these presentations normally every three months, there'll be some aspects of my project that I've really been focusing on in those three months. And that'll normally be what I want to talk about to the audience. So when I pick that key piece of data or that key aspect of my project that I know I want to present, that is when I can plan the story of my presentation. So the next thing that I do once I've selected this key piece of data is to write a single sentence on each slide saying what I want that slide to cover, just one sentence. And this helps you create a narrative in your mind of what you're going to be talking about to the audience. And normally I turn these sentences in a bit of a shorter way into the heading for that slide. And that also prompts me when I'm giving the presentation of, ah, this is why I made the slide in the first place and this is what I actually wanted to talk about. So once I have my number of slides, the outline for my presentation and my headings, which give an overview of what that slide is about. This is when I start to add in my data and I normally take it slide by slide. If I've done presentations in the past, I always try and use some of the introductory slides from those if they're applicable to the main piece of data I am presenting. So with the introduction, you don't need to give a full literature review of what you're gonna be talking about. For me, I always ask the question, okay, in order for the audience to understand the piece of data that I'm really keen on presenting this week, what background do they need to know? And that's how I then format my introduction. So I just pick out a few key pieces of literature. I talk about the topic in general, and I also will make sure that my project title is in there so I can show how this work links into the project that I'm doing. And I will say the main question that I'm trying to answer with the data shown in this presentation. For my results, I like to provide some previous experimental data as well that have led me to the data that I'm presenting in this presentation. So I always include some run up to 
the big piece of data that I'm presenting. Again, just so to the audience, it makes sense why I'm doing this and why I'm excited about this. And you should make sure they are excited too. So show them some of the past work that's led you up to this point. A picture speaks a thousand words and that is the way that I like to present. I do not overfill my slides with text. I normally write one summary sentence just to prompt me when I'm speaking and then have a graph or two or some images and I talk the audience through the graph that's on the slide and what it actually means. I always try to avoid reading out what is on the slide because my dad told me that the audience can read and they don't need you to just read out what is on the slide. That information is there for them to internalize and, and take it in. You can re-emphasize a point, of course, and talk around the sentence you've written on the slide, but just having long bullet points and reading them out isn't the best way to get your information across to an audience. It's much better, I feel, for me to have a graph or an image on the slide and me talk the audience through that image. So give them the words to the picture to make it all make sense. In my presentations, I always use animation, not animation like a seven year old who's just learned how to use PowerPoint, but I use animation so my slides aren't too busy when you first click onto them. So I'll show you now an example of a slide in my introduction from a recent presentation that I've done. You can see in isolation, this slide is super busy. So what I do to combat this is I use a really simple animation like a fade for each piece of data. It also is really useful to guide me through what I want to talk about. So I will just click, one piece of data will fade in and I will talk through that bit of data and then click, the next thing will fade in. So it also guides the audience through the slide and through the point you are trying to get across to them as well. So using animation is great, just maybe don't use like the mad twirl effect. Like it's not needed really, is it? Not needed. I always end my presentations with a conclusion slide. So just summing up what I've talked about in the data that I've shown and really bring home the point of the data conclusions that we have so far. And then I follow that up with a future direction slide to try and cover some of the potential questions the audience might have about what's coming next. I don't really prepare for questions from the audience. And that's because I feel like you can really dig yourself into a hole trying to prepare for questions which you can sometimes never predict. I just go with it. And if I get asked a question that I don't know the answer to, I normally just say, oh, I'm not too sure. I haven't come across that before. Um, but I'd really love to speak to you about that afterwards. So finally, let's just talk a little bit about presentation anxiety. And for me, I'm a fairly confident person in terms of I've had a lot of performance training. I'm used to being on the stage, but not as myself, playing a character, very, very different. Getting up in front of an audience of experts and talking about your work it's extremely vulnerable. You are putting yourself in a very vulnerable position and it's completely normal to be extremely nervous. I get super nervous before I speak. And what helped me was initially when I started doing big data presentations like this, I did used to write a script for my data presentations. I would write what I wanted to say and I would rehearse going over the slides with that script and trying to get in the points that I really wanted to bring up. Now, because I'm more experienced and I've done lots of these presentations, I don't write a script, but I will talk through the slides to myself at least two days before the presentation, talk through what would I like to say on this slide, say it, mm, don't like how I worded that there, I'll say it again until I get for each slide an ideal-ish idea of what I'd like to say. And then I'll go over that again, the day before and again just the morning of and once I've done that I normally know that I can rely on myself to say the majority of things that I want to say in the presentation. If you're just starting out you might really want to write a script for your presentation and rehearse that and go over it. That is completely fine but another way that I found really useful when I was getting used to presenting was just to memorize the first sentence that I wanted to say for each slide. I feel like once you start with a good sentence, which is leading you into what you wanna talk about, it's normally not too bad to just talk about the subject. I find that if I get the first sentence a bit muddled or I look at the slide and I'm like, 
what was I gonna say here? That's when I can freeze and panic a little bit. So just having a starter sentence for each slide will help guide you into what you actually wanna discuss. Always keep the messaging as simple as possible. And this is nice if you're quite nervous for a presentation as well. The audience don't need to know every single detail. They don't need to know every single detail. They need to know the main message. So if you write a main message for each slide, you can have that as a nice default to fall back on. If you find you're just starting to talk and you don't really know where it's going, just take a breath, collect yourself and say the main message. That is a good way to get back into the flow of the presentation. I had to give a virtual presentation today, which I find to be a bit easier in terms of nerves because you're not having to stand up in front of people, but harder because I get much more distracted when I'm not standing up in front of people and having that an adrenaline rush when I'm presenting. But when I'm in my own bedroom, it's much easier to just look up for a second from my computer and be like, oh, there's my bed. Oh my God, where am I up to? Ah. Try and really keep focused, have a nice quiet environment when you're presenting. I find it helps if I wear my headphones because then I feel like I'm in the computer, like put myself in the computer, but don't have my headphones on. I'm listening to all sorts of stuff going on around the house. Something that really also helps me when I'm presenting is to not look at the slide. When I present in person, I look at the slide to direct the audience to graphs and to certain bits of data. But normally I like to present outwards to the audience and look at them and talk about my results to them and let the words come to me and speak a bit more freely. I find if I focus on the slide, I just start reading out the slide and I'm like, hang on, what, what was I talking about? I'm just, I'm just reading. My brain's just reading out loud and I don't know what I'm talking about. To try, even if you're presenting virtually, I try and not just look at the screen. I even, if I have my camera on, I'll just look at myself talking. No, no, no. If I don't have my camera on, I'll look up and above my screen sometimes as well to just try and not be so focused on the words that I've already got written on the slide. Finally, for me being nervous, I would say that I try and speak really slowly so I can think of the words I wanna say before I just speak them. When I am nervous, I do not stop talking and my mouth runs before my brain has a chance to finish the sentence off, if that makes sense. So I'll just start saying a sentence and I'm like, oh no, I started this sentence in the wrong way and now I can't finish it off properly and I don't have the words. So instead I will speak quite slowly so I can let the words come to me and then speak them. So just slowing down your speech. And for me, what helps is gestures. If you're presenting in person as well, I try and stand like feet planted in the ground, shoulder width apart shoulders back and present rather than shuffling from side to side and showing that nervousness. If I act like I'm not nervous, I normally present like I'm not nervous as well. It's like a tricking, I'm tricking my brain, but that is something that I've also learned really, really helps. I just want to say though, it is so natural to be nervous when you're doing one of these big presentations, but just know that if you practice beforehand, your brain will have a template in there of what it wants to say. If you mess up your words, if you fluff a sentence that you wanted to get out, it doesn't matter. We're all human. The people in the audience are all human and they all know exactly what it's like to be presenting in front of experts. It is. They have to do it as well. And I fluff my words all the time. I will say something and I'll go, oh, sorry. What I meant to say was this, it's fine, it's acceptable. And I think we can't strive for perfection in this situation. What you wanna strive for is an open conversation about your data, which is all one-sided until the very end when you can have an interaction. Treat it more like a conversation about your work than a really strict presentation where every single word has to be absolutely perfect. Just relax a little bit about it and you will actually then enjoy it more as well. So I hope you like this video. I hope the content was useful. And if you have a big presentation coming up, good luck, you will be amazing. For more science from me, neuroscience from me, productivity tips, subscribe to the channel or you can catch me over on social media and I will catch you next time. Bye.